Hi everyone, it's Az here from Heel vs. Babyface with Batwoman, episode 9. But it's a slightly different episode this week because it's part 2 of Crisis on Infinite Earth. So the whole format of the show is completely different because it's all part of this crossover event. Couple of things I need to get off my chest. Number one, Christian channel. Please keep it as Christian as possible, Az. Number two... Ah, right. It's fun seeing superheroes interact with each other, for the most part. Uh, some of these characters have got great charisma on screen. I think Katie Lotz has got great charisma on screen. Brandon Routh, legend. Dominic Purcell, legend. Matt Ryan, legend. Uh, I think this new Mia Deirdre as well. She's got something about her. Fingers crossed she won't get tainted, but she's got something about her that I quite like. Not just that she's very pretty. And... Um, for all the good it does to see them interact, and for all the fun it is to see the wonderful cameos, seeing Tom Welling today was be still my beating heart, and to see Erica Durrance as Lois Lane and to have them interact was amazing. To see Brandon Routh now redon the Superman costume, and by the way, the pimpest Superman costume I've seen for a long time, uh, which puts the current CW Superman to shame. But don't worry, the show does that anyway, of its own accord. For all of those fun little moments, uh, this is garbage. This is written by people who don't know or don't appreciate or understand regular conversation who don't understand people, who don't understand plot, who don't understand making sense. And that's the most infuriating thing. Because what they try to put in motion in this episode makes no sense. And after this, after I've dealt with what I'm going to be dealing with, I need to refer you to an interview with the people who did this. And what they say to a very specific thing which happens in this episode. And reading it, it just made, it made me laugh. Laugh so much because it just proved that they haven't got a clue. Not a clue. And this is why the CW can barely push one to one and a half million per show of its superhero shows. I mean, I don't watch the other stuff, so I don't know what the viewer is. I know that some are well below this. But it's because the writing is insulting insulting it doesn't matter if you're 60 50 40 30 20 or 10 the writing is actually insulting to the audience i'm currently now on season six of smallville it's definitely not as good as it was at the beginning and i don't think it falls off the cliff until lex luther leaves until michael rosenbaum leaves at the end of season seven i think it's eight nine and ten that fall off a complete cliff but that said, falling off a cliff for Smallville all those years ago might actually be genius compared to now. Because even at season six, it's still such a believable show and got believable characters compared to this dross, utter dross of writing that they call at the moment. So I know I've had to get off on a slightly serious note, but... Uh, these people are awful. <laughs> and Batwoman is absolutely hideous in this episode. And they just don't understand. But we'll get into it. So, it starts off with uh, three of the Whamans. Uh, ooh, <laughs> good shot, me. Um, pouring one out for uh, Stephen Amell, Green Arrow, who passed away at the end of uh, last episode. In the first part of the crossover. And... Uh, Kara Karnix, she's just like, we shouldn't really be drinking when things are going down. Batwoman's just like, I don't know what she's like, to be honest. Well, she's horrible. That's what she's like. So they have a bit of chit-chat, and then Harbinger appears, acting just like Lila again. So I don't know how that's working. Uh, but she just uh, is completely like Lila again. And she's just like, oh, I've just come from home, just seen John, just seen the kitty. I uh, haven't told John about Green Arrow yet. Don't know when to. Never mind. Okay. Don't tell him that your best friend's dead. Fine. Uh, so they're like, all right, whatever. And uh, they have some chit chat about not a lot. And so they go back to wherever they are. I I'm not too sure where all this is, to be perfectly honest with you. 
and they're just like, we need a wave rider. We need a wave rider to, to help stop this crisis. And, uh, and, and so uh, Katie Lotz, I'm not blaming Katie, White Canary, let's say White Canary, separate uh, church from state. White Canary says, oh, I promised the legends no more crossovers. It's the end of the multiverse. And you're bothered about saying, hey, folks, no more crossovers, but we've got to. Are you kidding? Wow. So the monitor's just like, whatever. There's a fucking multiverse full of them. I'll get another one. So Harbinger bangs away to Earth, whatever it turns out to be, because that just like spins around. Uh, Earth, whatever. And there's this uh, clapped out wave rider. I think it's trying to look a little bit like the Millennium, Millennium Falcon. And uh, she goes inside and it's meant to be messy, but it's not really messy. There's just like a couple of bottles here and there and a couple of little things on the floor. And Dominic Purcell's there is, what is he, Heatwave or whatever he is. I, I don't know what his character's called. And the voice is um, the guy from Prison Break and he was Captain Cold or whatever. And uh, she's like, yeah, we need to borrow your uh, your wave rider. Do you fancy coming to save the multiverse? I'll give you some beer. And he's just like, yeah, I like beer. Uh, so that was that sorted. No, literally, that's like that sorted. But Dominic Purcell is, is quite cool. Now, this scene is uh, absolutely ridiculous. I know some people would probably laugh at it. But he's got, Monitor's got all the people lined up here, right? And he's he's talking about... Uh, uh, how Oliver made the ultimate sacrifice and and, and died at it, and uh, then they decide that to to go through this serious moment, wouldn't it be hilarious if the baby just keeps on crying, and they have to pass it from person to person because nobody can make the baby stop crying. Uh, Oliver's dead. Tone. T Sorry, am I meant to be sad? Am I meant to be laughing? To oh, writers don't understand. Hey, wouldn't, we f wouldn't it be funny if, like, when the monitor is, like, talking about Oliver being dead and stuff, I mean, he's only a white heterosexual male, uh, if the baby was, like, crying and they had to, like, put it down the line? Tone! Tone! The basics of writing are lost on these buffoons. So they pass it down. Obviously, obviously, when it gets to Batwoman, she's just like, don't give it to me. I'm a piece of human garbage who hates everything because I am a detestable, horrible character. So she passes it to Dominic Purcell and Dominic Purcell's just like, baby. And the baby's just like, Ooh. so uh, they bond and it's quite nice. And it's nice that they bond for the whole show. It's... It's some nice comic relief, but at the same time, it wasn't done at the most appropriate time. But whatever. This... <sighs> and then Clark's just like, oh, look, I got cucked. <laughs> I can't even sort my own baby out. I need a bigger man to sort my baby out for me. Don't worry, that's just the first of three cuckings he gets in this episode, as well as getting the chick kicked out of him. Um, so uh, Grant's just like, I'm not going to do much this episode, so don't look at me. And they're like, fine. Now, uh, the Book of Destiny's back. I mean, I, don't, I never saw it in the last crossover because I didn't watch the last crossover. But it was meant to be destroyed, but now it's back. Uh, because reasons. Because uh, they need it as a MacGuffin for this week's episode. And it doesn't make any sense. Uh, so he's just like, look, Book of Destiny's back. It's in the library. And then Batwoman goes, I am a piece of human effluent. What am I doing here? And everybody went, we don't know. You are just horrible. Uh, and then, uh, <laughs> yummy. Uh, so they just do, you know, they cry a bit, they cry a bit and, uh, they move on. It's, oh, get off my screen. Woo, 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 part two. So, uh, moving on. Uh, Kara's just like looking sternly at something and then she turns around and the monitor has brought back Lex Luthor from the dead, apparently. And he's John Cryer. From Two and a Half Men. <sighs> I want to call him uh, Frappuccino Luther. Because the way he behaves, I think he'd be more at home in a coffee shop. You know, looking through some magazines, picking out what carpet he wants for his office that his wife's boyfriend works in. Uh, so I think that's probably... I'm going to call him Frappuccino. 
from now on, because he is a real soy-based Lex Luthor if ever I've seen one. Michael Rosenbaum, alpha compared to this thing. And she's like, why is Lex Luthor here? He's dead. And he's just like, no, I've used my power to bring Lex Luthor back. He must play his part in this crisis event. And she's just like, well, if you're going to raise Lex Luthers from the dead, I don't trust you. I'm going to have a huffy poo and walk off. But she's still gorgeous, so I forgive her. And, oh, God. Oh, just this next bit just makes me want to vomit in my mouth. Actually, I did vomit in my mouth. So Bat Whammon comes walking down and she's just like, because she can't speak like a normal human being, because she doesn't understand the character at all. And she thinks, oh, I've got to do an impression of Batman at all times. So I gotta speak like this. I gotta speak like this all the time. She's just like, if you if you didn't understand what was going on, it means that if you die again, then the monitor's not gonna bring you back anymore. And he's just like, and and you are bitch. And you are and she sticks her finger on his chin and goes, Ugh, somebody that's not very friendly. Put a finger on me, I'll break your fucking finger. Oh, disgusting, disgusting, disgusting person, disgusting human being. So uh, she's like, hey, do you fancy going to Gotham? Because we've got to now find, the thing is, in this episode, they've got to find the uh, the seven paragons. They've already got some. Clara's the paragon of hope. Um, I don't know, Tyler, Tyler Hocklin? I think that's pronounced his surname. The Superman. He's the paragon of soy. And uh, some other people are the paragons of something else. Uh, but apparently they've got to go to Batman of the Future because Batman of the Future is the paragon of courage. They've got to uh, recruit him. That's what they think, at least, anyway. Turns out, obviously not. She's going to be the paragon of courage because... <laughs> Why? Uh, but never mind. So she's like, hey, do you fancy a trip to Gotham? Uh, because you're a whammon, I'm a whammon, and I'm going to try and hit on you. But there's going to be a part very soon where I forget I'm actually gay. Uh, so... Uh, Harbour just starts walking through the corridors of the ship. She's she's getting, like, vibrations from the book. I don't know. She's getting vibrations. And Lex Luthor's just like, ha, 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 I've just stolen the book. And I'm going to go through the multiverse killing all of the supermen. <sighs> Whatever. So she's like, oh, I couldn't get to you in time, even though I can teleport anywhere at any given opportunity any mo in the blink of an eye, but I couldn't stop you whatever and the monitor comes in and she's just like he's got the book of destiny and the monitor's just like mm -hmm. as if it's all part of the plan by the way the plan doesn't make any sense and it's a complete joke and the monitor just gets a ton of multiverse supermen killed for nothing We'll see, that, we'll see that shortly. Oh, my God. This show is horrendous. Horrendous! Uh, Barry and uh, Iris have uh, an intimate hug where they're just like, look at us. Look at us. I've got my arm around you. You've got your arm around me. Our cheeks are touching. My head's resting on your shoulder. And we've got no chemistry whatsoever for six seasons. Uh, so we're going to move on from that because uh, I didn't give a shit what they said. I didn't pay any attention. Uh, so Mia and Katie Lotz are just like chilling out. She, Katie's just like, what are you up to? She's like, I'm going to res my dad from the dead. I'm going to stick him in a Lazarus pit and res him. And Katie's like, who got res from a Lazarus pit, by the way. She's like, oh, you don't know what you're messing with. Um, you know, you come out of those, you ain't got a soul. You got to be very careful. And she's just like, I know all about you in the Lazarus pit. And she's just like, hey, when you know me, then you can talk about me. And she's like, well, okay, well, when you know my dad. You can get to talk to me. Uh, so it, had a, it was quite a nice... Li this was a decent exchange. Again, Mia is is a pretty decent character. I really hope they don't taint her because uh, she comes across as pretty decent. Oh, no. Uh, so here we are, Wayne Manor. And, uh, oh, my goodness me. Scissor and Scissoring 2 arrive. And uh, this is where Batwoman well, totally forgets she's gay. She knocks on the door, and guess who opens it? Luke Fox, or this version of Luke Fox. He's got a six-pack. You know, he's got his shirt open. Bit odd. He's living in the house with Bruce Wayne. Just walks around like this. I don't know. Maybe he's Bruce's twink in this universe. I'm not sure. But, you know, that's how certain things happen. And uh, Batman just goes, wow, look at that six-pack. And he's just like, what? 
And she's just like, oh, I know you. And this is honest to God. I swear on my life. This is essentially what she says. Oh, I know you. I mean, not you, but another version of you. The version of you I know is a psychic beta male. She basically says that. But you, you're all beef. You're all like hunk and beef and stuff. And Kara's like, aren't you meant to be gay? And she's like, uh, I, I, I don't know. The writers forgot. The writers forgot. They forgot. Um, so he's just like, uh, I, I'm Kate Kane. I'm his cousin. Let me in. And he's just like, no. And shuts the door on them. And it's quite funny. It's actually really funny. And I'm thinking to myself, I could watch a Batman of the Future show where um, he plays... You know, uh, like, because uh, Luke, they've got Luke as a Robin at the moment, Signal. Where you've got a Batman of the Future and a Signal. If they're not going to do Terry McGuinness's, I could watch a Signal. Yeah, whatever. Uh, so I was like, yeah, but have him like this. <laughs> have him with confidence and cockiness and it's good. It was good. Uh, so he shuts the door on him and Kara kicks it down because she's like, no man, shut the door on me. Uh, so she kicks it down, he gets his gun out and he's just literally, <laughs> that wasn't a euphemism for penis. He gets his literal gun out look gunsies and he's just like don't you move any further and and then bruce comes down the stairs and he's just like luke 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 luke, luke. it's been a long time since we've had guests and he comes down in the kingdom come exosuit even though this isn't the kingdom come batman i just need to stress that this is not the kingdom come batman this is not the kingdom come universe neither is the ki the kingdom come superman we see that's they're different universes anyway but whatever but they look, look, you know, it's a nice homage to the Kingdom Come thing. So um, he lets them in and he's like, Kate, that's you? And she's like, yeah. And he's like, well, that's quite nifty because you died five years ago. And she's like, did I? And this is quite cool. This is all quite cool. And he says, yes. He, uh, he talks about how uh, he's totally fallen from grace. Uh, how he goes around killing people, how he went around killing people, and then once he started killing people, he couldn't stop killing people. And uh, when uh, it became too much for him, Kate decided to take up the mantle, and she thought that she could restore integrity to uh, Batman, and uh, she got killed. And I'm just thinking, I know this is in the future, but can it be five years in the future, which means Kate gets killed in about one week's time on her own show? Would be good. Um, okay, so they move on from that. And they'll get back to it. And so Clark and Lois are zapping between universes trying to find the paragon of truth, which is a Superman. A man who has endured more loss than any mortal possibly could. And so they're, they're jumping between universes and uh, they get to this universe and they're just like, whoa, look up in the sky. That's a good shot. I mean, it's a good... This is the actual an image from the death of Superman where Doomsday kills Superman, but Lex has killed him. Lex Luthor kills Man of Steel, disappears into thin air. Uh, because Lex, of course, as was said, is going around uh, the multiverse killing the Supermans. So they're just like, oh, well, the Superman of this universe is dead. We're going to have to move on to another one. So they go on to another one. Then Constantine comes into the freight. Matt Ryan's a bit of a dude. I like him a lot. And they're just like, right, we need you to perform some, perform some porn. We need you to porn, make porn. Uh, we need you to perform some magic to bring back um, uh, Arthur, uh, Oliver from the deed. Because we want to do a, a, a Lazarus pit thing. And he's just like, fancy a ciggy. And she's just like, no, don't smoke. He doesn't really. He says, no, the ciggies are used for me to make this magic happen. And they get a nice little bit. That's actually quite nice uh, CGI, nice little things. And he can see universes blinking out of existence as they try and find a universe that has a working Lazarus pit because all the Lazarus pits have been destroyed on this planet. So he finds one, he goes, let's head over there. And they're just like, cool. I genuinely popped at this bit. I genuinely, legitimately popped at this bit when we got to Smallville and we can see Tom Welling in the background. I was like, yes! Sorry, peek the microphone, don't care. And it was lovely to see. There's articles on the wall by Lois Lane before we get to the shot. And it's like, the night I spent with Superman, uh, which is, you know, from the uh, from the film, from the Christopher Reeve film. That was the, I think that's the article that Lois Lane wrote in that Christopher Reeve film. And this is, I think, the one of the final shots from the actual S Smallville show when he comes out on the roof and he... Frickin' me for... 
Uh, so you've got all these nice little articles like this. Superman saves the day. You know, heroic, heroic stuff. Something that none of these people will actually understand. And um, so he's outside chopping wood, ladies. And uh, then these lot just appear. They just come out, you know, swing, appear out of the blue. Apparently chasing Lex Luthor, but Lex Luthor hasn't arrived yet. So they can't be chasing Lex Luthor. They've got to be ahead of Lex Luthor. But more about that later. Doesn't Don't, don't let that worry you, folks. Don't let that worry you. Uh, so they, uh, first of all, Bitsy's just like, holy shit, an alpha male. And he's just like, oh, thank you. Thank you for saying that, uh, Bitsy, because I haven't been cucked for at least 10 minutes. And she's like, don't worry, I'm going to do it a third time. Uh, so, you know, it's nice to know he's just getting cucked at every given opportunity. She's just like, oh my God, this is an alpha. This is an alpha. This is an alpha. This is an alpha. And she's right. So he's just like, uh, who are you? And they're just like, ah, you're Clark Kent. And he's just like, yeah. And it's just like, this might sound a bit weird. But the multiverse is falling apart. And uh, everything's dying. And we kind of need your help. And oh my god, they suddenly all disappear. Why did they disappear? Because Beta, uh, sorry, Frappuccino Luther. Frappuccino Luther appears. And he's just like, ha, ha. Clark Kent, and he's just like, who are you? And he's just like, I am Lex Luthor. And he, he walks up to him with the axe, and it's quite funny. He just, like, plants a look at him. He's just like, you're not Lex. He absolutely disses the hell out of him. And it's funny because this is an alpha male. And uh, he even turns his back on him because he cares that little about this person. Uh, Frappuccino Luthor being Frappuccino Luthor. And he's just like, oh, it's my destiny to go through all the universes killing you. Because <laughs> I'm just a Machiavellian Frappuccino man. And so he gets out a piece of kryptonite. And he's just like, ho, oh, oh, ho, time to die, Superman. The Superman's just like, uh, ooh, kryptonite. That's cool. Can I have a look at it, please? And takes it off Lex Luthor. It's like, oh, this is nice. And then throws it into the field and says, doesn't affect me anymore. I gave up my powers. I gave up my powers so I could be human, so I could have a normal life and have kids. And I've got kids with me missus. And Lex is just like, but you're a god. You could fly. You could do this. You could do that. You could do the other. And he's just like, none of it's as important as having a family. And he was just boss. And he was just completely boss. And uh, so Lex is just like, all right then. I'm going to punch you. And he tries to punch him and uh, Clark catches his punch and then smacks him in the face, which is rather funny. And he just, there you go. He just, uh, he catches his punch. Look at him. <laughs> you, you're just a soy boy, mate. Not Tom. Frappuccino Luther. Frappuccino Luther is just, ah, oh, you're a soy boy, mate. So he goes for the punch, grabs his hand <laughs> and then punches him. And he's just like, uh, even, what's he say? He's just like, oh, whatever. Your universe is going to die. I'm getting out of here. And then uh, Erica Dorrance comes out as Lois Lane. She's like, you talking to yourself? And he's just like, well, some people appeared. And Lex Luthor appeared. Multiverse is dying. Um, and all this kind of stuff. And Lois is just like, oh, you've actually got a sense of humor after 10 years. Anyway, the girls need us. They've made a mess. So they've got two kids, two girls by the looks of it. Maybe three. And, uh, yeah, then they just walk in hand in hand, and uh, it's lovely. It was just so lovely seeing the house, because the farm's still there and everything in real life. Seeing the house, uh, seeing Tom, seeing Erica, uh, it was brilliant. And then, unfortunately, we had to go back to, um, to the land of CW. So they're still talking about uh, how uh, he's just a horrible person now. I'm just a horrible bruce wayne now i kill i love killing killing's awesome killing's great the only reason why i don't kill anymore is because i'm in this suit otherwise i'd kill 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 so there's a little bit of humor with dominic purcell and um brandon routh but then we go to other mo world metropolis where she's like oh my god this is really what a daily planet looks like and then they bump into brandon routh's superman when she just absolutely dotes all over him saying hey soy soy superman over here 
cuck time. Cuck number three. Cuck time number three. Alpha male. Beta. Alpha. Beta. <laughs> As, why do you say beta for this, but you say beta when it's beta testing? To piss people off. That's why. To piss people off. Uh, so she just, she just dotes all over him and her husband's there, but you know, it's the third time in one episode. Why should he care? Uh, so they, they, oh, Kara's just like, I'm going to use my x-ray vision to find the Batcave because I don't know why. And, uh, so Superman talks about his loss. He talks about how all these plaques on the wall are, uh, people who have died, Lois Lane included, Jimmy Olsen, Perry White, because, uh, the Joker, uh, decided he wasn't getting enough attention. And so he destroyed, uh, he gassed the whole planet, killed a lot of people. And he wasn't there to save them. And it's his greatest uh, failure and all this kind of stuff. And she's like, almost like a loss that no mortal man could bear. You are the paragon of truth. And he's just like, really? And then Lex Luthor just walks in the door. So again, not chasing Lex Luthor. Lex Luthor is chasing them. So the monitor's plan is all nonsense. Oh, but Lex Luthor will lead them to the Paragon of Truth. No! They led Lex Luthor to the... Ah, oh, this show. Um, so anyway, he's just like, Oh, I'm so bored of killing Supermans. I've killed so many Supermans. I'm going to actually make this Supermans fight each other. So, in another bit of tonal drivel, they start... He, he, he makes Kingdom Come Superman, even though it's not Kingdom Come Superman... Fight Tyler Hocklin, Superman. But they are fighting up in the sky against each other. And what's the music? What's the music, folks? Is it... This is intense. Supermen going after each other fighting. No, it's... This is fun! Tone! Oh my god, these writers are... F Ugh. So, uh, anyway, Brandon Ralph is absolute alpha personified, and he's <laughs> kicking the living crap out of Tyler Hocklin's beta Superman, who is, of course, getting his own TV show. Can't wait for Lois to constantly bittles and cock him every week. Uh, probably won't watch him. So, uh, yeah, he, he annihilates in the fight. And then Lex Luthor just decides, I'm not going to watch the two women in front of me walk up behind me and knock me out. Because lazy writers don't know how to write interesting things into the show. <sighs> this is trash. Oh, uh, so they open the book and they're just like, Clark, don't kill him. You're a beautiful man. You're the, you're way better than Tyler Hocklin's Superman. You're alpha. He's beta. You can't, you can't, you can't punch down, mate. You can't punch down. He's just not good enough. Look, he's on his knees. He's on his knees because you're too alpha and he's just a beta cock soy boy. And he's just like, oh, yeah, you're right. I snapped out of it. Thanks, girls. So they uh, find the Lazarus pit. And uh, I think uh, Jonah Hex comes along, but he's not messed up. Uh, so they, they do a little bit of stabbing of his face anyway. I don't know. And uh, they put uh, Oliver into the Lazarus pit and they wait and they wait. And then, so oh my God, Batman. Okay. Oh God, here we go, folks. Ah, oh, Jesus. Christian Channel. Batman takes Kate down to the Batcave. And, he's j and Kara is just like, Oi, this guy killed this universe's Superman. He's got a trophy cabinet upstairs. And one of the things in the trophy cabinet was Clark Kent's bloody glasses. He killed him. And he's just like, yeah, yeah, I killed him. Stranger from outer space. Unknown powers. Uh, yeah, I took him out. He was a threat. He was a threat to everyone. I took him out. And she's just like, well, I'm going to I'm gonna show you what as women do, especially ones that wear pants, because her uh, skirts are sexist. And she's like, did you really? And he's like, yeah, of 
certainly did. And so, uh, Kara goes to attack him. Look, by the way, she is not in any way, shape, or form affected by anything. She goes to attack him, and he punches her square across the room. Square across the room. And it's just like, oh, his exosuit must be really, really powerful then. Even though it's keeping him up, it's still very strong. And then, after that, he reveals that he has a bit of kryptonite on his wrist but clearly he had to reveal it clearly it wasn't having any effect on Kara to start with because she was face to face with him not exhibiting anything as soon as he opened up the kryptonite then she started getting green bad CG on her face miles away after she'd been punched across the room Bear this in mind, because we're about to get into makes no sense territory. So, uh, she's just like, no, you can't hurt my frenzies. Oh, by the way, Oliver jumps out of the pit like, I'm a crazy. So, uh, he goes to punch Kara again. And Batwoman just grabs his arm. Just grabs his arm. Even though that was enough to punch a Kryptonian halfway across the room. She just grabs the arm. That's all I need to do. Then she punches him once. He falls back into electric thing and dies. Dies. Batwoman has now added full-on murder to her resume. So now it's one murder, six uh, what third-degree murders. I don't know, or at least at least a, you know whatever it is to be part of the conspiracy to commit murder. I suppose because she keeps letting Alice go. Uh, torture, kidnapping times two, uh, destruction of a, 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 a valuable... What? But she's got full, full-blooded full murder up there now. Good on her. Good on her. Now, I just want to stop here for now. Just want to read you a, a, from a, an article. Uh, this is not Kate Kane's Bruce Wayne. This is a question that was asked to the writers. But it's still Bruce Wayne. How will having to kill him impact her going forward this is the response it's less about killing him because she didn't intentionally try to kill him he was being vicious and she was defending Kara to protect Kara I don't think that as an active goal of hers she's gonna have the weight of that on her shoulders She's not going to care. She's not going to care that she murdered somebody. Great, moving on, because Batwoman is a f***ing disgusting piece of filth. Uh, Lex Luthor is now incarcerated, uh, and the monitor's just like, ha ha ha, I made uh, you chase Lex Luthor, so he took you to the Paragon of Truth. And they're just like, no, he chased us. You moron. Now, there's loads of supermen that could have potentially helped us, dead anyway moving on um she's like oh look that batman was not a nice man he was not the paragon of courage and he's just and the monitor's just like ah i only said that i was going to lead you to the paragon of 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 courage it was you all along you disgusting piece of filth and she's just like, and everyone just laughs everyone's just like how is this 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 disgusting creature the paragon of courage and uh brandon ralph says bad writing that's why uh, so that was nice. Well done, Brandon. And uh, yeah, lots of smug faces. Uh, Arthur comes out of the pit and he's just like, oh, I'm mad. I'm still mad. Ah! Then, oh my God, me, this ending. So this is the ending. Uh, the miserable girls are being miserable, but uh, Kara says something hopeful. And uh, Batwoman says, oh, looks like the Paragon of Hope's got her hope back. And she's like, yay. And then she said, look, I found this picture in, in Bruce's uh, office or whatever. I don't care. And it's a picture of me and my sister, Alice. This is what we could be like. This is what we could be like. And it's a picture of them smiling and looking good. And Kara says, hey, maybe one day you'll actually be like that. And I'm like, no, maybe one day you'll apprehend her and she'll do the prison time for all the murders she's committed. And you can visit her in prison. And then, and then, they share a beer. And Kara's just like, right, later, I'll see you in a bit. Walks away. And Batwoman, Batwoman 
has stolen the kryptonite. And she's just like, oh, I've stolen this kryptonite. I might kill Kara in the next episode. Because I'm a fucking horrible person. There's no reason for me to take it. Kara's exhibiting nothing uh, weird. All that she's saying is, I, I really want to get my, my world back. I'm going to see if we can use the Book of Truth or whatever the f it's called to get my, my planet back that's been destroyed. And Batman's just like, oh, kryptonite might kill you. Feeling cute might kill you later. Hashtag Instagram. Hashtag vlogging. Oh! It was, it's a horrible, horribly written show. Horribly, horribly written show. And then it ends with Lyle again zapped away. And, it's, and this guy's just like, hey, do you know who I am? And uh, everyone says, uh, the anti-monitor, we're guessing. And he says, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm the anti-monitor. Um, well done. Oh, so before I go, I've got to give you the ratings from last night's Supergirl. Now, bear in mind that Supergirl has only hit over a million viewers once this season so far. And that was the first episode of the season doing 1.263 million viewers this week. 1.673. So the most popular episode by a country mile because of the crossover. The demo jumped from a 0.2 to a 0.6. So good demo as well. So uh, the likelihood is Batwoman is going to do possibly over 2 million viewers. Possibly over 2 million viewers tonight. We shall see. But uh, you would think that she would beat the Supergirl uh, viewing figure. Uh, so the Batwoman, the Batwoman rating isn't out as of the right of the you know this video. I will uh, post it as soon as it comes out. Uh, yeah, it's fun to see some interaction, but my God, uh, the writing is is literal garbage, and this character is disgusting, absolutely disgusting. Christian channel. So I hope you enjoyed the vid. If you did, do get a thumbs up and also subscribe to the channel. Follow me on social media and Twitch live streaming. Links in the description box down below, and I'll be back with some more stuff very soon. You take care. Bye for now.